Welcome. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshana B'mitzvota V'tzivanu V'asok B'divrei Torah. Amen. Amen. And here we go with the screen share. And we are on Parshat Tzav. That's the name of the Parsha right there. And uh, this Parsha starts, in, is basically could be divided into two major sections. The first section has to do with specific ways in which different offerings are divided or treated or or uh, as you will see amongst the priests or special additional halachot regarding these, these korbanot, these particular offerings. Uh, and then the second part of this parsha is the, the beginning of Aaron and his sons being inaugurated into the priesthood. So that's the second half of this parsha, two different uh, but related subjects. So just finishing up, uh, this has to do, let's take a look quickly, uh, one second, what this is dealing with. It's talking about mincha offerings, uh, all the way back here. Here we go, v'zot torat ha-mincha, right? So it says, these are the laws, right? The instructions, the instructions regarding the mincha, the meal offering. And just uh, the details here, um, how it's to be treated. And we discover here that part of the mincha offering actually goes to the priests, as we will see. However, the, the offering, if the priest himself uh, brings a mincha offering, it is completely offered up on the altar. It is not then distributed amongst the priests. It's a, it is basically, in a way, an olah of its kind, right? a, a whole offering. So here's where it tells you the what is left of a remember with a meal offering that basically the priest who offers it takes a fistful of the flour mixed with the oil, or it turns out sometimes these are various types of mincha offerings. Sometimes they're baked and fried, etc. So they're actually uh, wafers or or uh, or uh, sort of the same kind of dough as a, a donut. In other words, fried and thick dough, etc. But it says vahanoterit mi mena, and what is left over of after they've the priest has put the askarata, its remembrance part, that's the fistful and all the lavona and all the frankincense up on the altar. What's left over, Yochlu Aaron Vanav. Aaron and his sons uh, may eat. And then it says, Matzot Te'achel. So that would be a matzah, right? Wafers, they shall be eaten. The Makom Kadosh. This is just reviewing what we did last year. Okay. So uh, just the, the, the various offerings there. Just finishing this up here. So that's why I wanted to go back and try and summarize briefly. He says, Kol zachar bivne Aharon yochlena, all males of Aaron's sons shall eat of it. Chok olam ledorotechem. It is an everlasting statute for all your generations. Me'ishe al Hashem, from the fire offerings to Hashem. Kol asher gabahem yikdash. Anything that comes in contact with them, with this particular meal offering, is what it's talking about. Yikdash shall be sanctified. Uh, that certainly leaves a lot of questions out there. Uh, and Rashi does certainly attempt to answer some of those. Can I ask you one that that that's just grammatical that he doesn't answer or ask? Go on. May Ishe. Um, Hashem. Hashem, yes. because there's no um, um, preposition, but Ishe implies the fire. I thought the fires of yes. God, as opposed yeah. to the fire to or for. So it just simply means from the fire offerings of Hashem. In other words, that Hashem has commanded us. Okay. I would think. I would think. Gotcha. Yeah. So let's take care of this. Because usually we say Ladonai instead of... Yes, but this is... Okay, but this is in Smichut. Okay, this word, Ishe, means yeah. 
fire offerings of. Right. That's why I thought maybe yeah. these were, yeah, I was saying was belong to. Yeah, rather. well, or offered to, offered to Hashem. Oh. Right. That, or Hashem has commanded us. Right. Uh, however, right. Um, the, yeah. I've got a, the, the, the JPS mm -hmm. has the, a little, it makes more sense, from the Lord's offerings by fire. Okay. So it's going to put them a little bit more. Okay. Maybe that makes more sense. Um, I think it's sort of saying the same thing to me. But it is. No, it, no, no. But I mean, it's maybe yeah, more yeah. from, you get the May. Yeah. You get the from there. Well, the, it no, it sense. wasn't the May I had an issue with. It was the Ishe, the fires oh. of God. No, oh. so oh. Ishe is fire to God. God. Yeah, fire offerings of. Right. Right. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on with it. Here we go. Kol Zachar, it says any, so, so this, it's already told us that Aaron and his sons may eat of it, right? And now it says all, all males of the sons of Aaron. Is that not a little bit um, a redundant? Okay. Superfluous. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Superfluous and redundant. There wouldn't be female sons. That is correct. So the question is, what is this coming to add? And this is interesting, right? This, this, of course, Rashi gets out of, I'm pretty sure, the Sifra and all the analyses that are of these verses, right? Kol Zachar, Afilu Ba'amum, that is to come to include someone who has a blemish. So in other words, even though that particular uh, priest is not able to personally bring any offerings at all, nevertheless, they are given a portion of these offerings as well they're entitled to enjoy it. We are not into humiliating people uh, unnecessarily for sure. So even though they cannot actually offer up and we might think, well, the reason why these priests are able to eat of it is because they have done it, they've done the job, just like the priest who brings the Ola is given the skin of the offering. But here the fact that it says kol zachar is to come to include this word kol, every male even those who are blemished. Lama ne'emar, uh, so why is it stated? Im la'achila, right? So if it's referring to, if it is just referring it to eating, to consuming it, he says, akfar harek far amur. He says, this is already stated. In fact, I believe it's like uh, maybe two verses down. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, it's chapter 21. Forgive me. Chapter 21, it says, regarding priests who, are, who have blemishes, lechem elohav, the bread or the food of his God, mikoche hakodashim, from the most holy, etc. And it says he should eat of it. And it's referring there to blemishes that render a male priest uh, not capable or not not allowed to bring up offerings. They're excluded. Ella, so what does it come to do? Ella le rabot ba'alei mumim le machloket. So I have to explain this. But it comes to include priests who have blemishes in terms of apportioning, meaning that they, in other words, when they divide up these offerings for the priest's personal usage or to, to it's not so personal because it still has to be done with uh, various types of laws. Nevertheless, they would all be entitled to an equal portion. And what this is saying is, it isn't just giving a Balmum permission to eat whatever his non-blemished uh, brother allows him to eat or offers to him, but it means he is included in the apportionment. He's included in the process of apportioning out the offerings, just like everyone else. There's no, in no sense here is he excluded from the regular apportioning, and that's what it's coming to tell you. Not the fact that he's, that he is entitled to eat from the offering. You can see here, wow, you know, really pulling it apart. Kol asher yiga, anything that comes in contact, right, with this mincha. And this, he says, is from Torat Kohanim. Torat Kohanim is also another name for the Sifra, this halachic midrash uh, that analyzes these verses. And he says, Kodshim Kalim. He says, less holy uh, sanctified 
uh, food or sanctified animals. So for example, uh, let me say like truma would be kochim kalim. Uh, truma, just to remind you, was a portion of the harvest of a farmer that there was basically one fiftieth uh, if you were stingy, it was one sixtieth. If you were generous, it was one fortieth uh, that they gave to the priests, and that had that was sanctified. This is of the harvest, uh, and um, the only priests were allowed to eat it. I like to give the example that if you had a friend who was a kohen and you weren't a kohen, and they invited you over uh, for dinner, they couldn't offer you truma. It was not for them to offer it to you. In fact, it's very clear. And the priest had to make sure that it remained in a holy state, that it, nothing uh, impure came into contact with it. It was important for them. So we are talking about, so there are different levels of offerings and their level of sanctification. And the more sanctified they are, the more subject they are to impurity. They have to be guarded more carefully. So he says, either kochim kalim or chulim, right? So a chulim refers to non-sanctified food. Food, then the, the word chol basically means uh, non-sanctified. Sheig Uba that or that touched came into contact with this with this uh, mincha the yivlu mimeno uh, and had absorbed some of this mincha yikdash uh, they may they become sanctified and again here from the Torah Kohanim explaining what this really means and just a sidebar quickly being able to do this. Is, is, is what makes it possible to do it in reality. In other words, you can look at halacha and you could say, oh, in principle, what a great, you know, what great laws these are. But what the Torah Kwanim is doing is by discussing the various applications of it. It's like theoretical math and applied math or theoretical science and applied science. Because when you apply something and you try to bring it into reality, you have to deal with all kinds of things, issues that, that reality brings when you're trying to do something theoretical. Um, you know, you have to deal with how motivated are people? Uh, what's the weather like? I mean, there are many, many issues. And this process, the point that I'm actually trying to make is that this process makes it as part of this world as at least at this point, we can do it. And again, all an application of taking very, very, very seriously the commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Because, you know, we're very good at using words. But the question is, to what degree do we actually try to apply those words into living reality? So going on here, Ikdash, and this is again from the Sifra, Liyot Kamoha, that is to say that this Kochim Kalim or these Chulim foods or items become as holy, sanctified as the Mincha offering itself. She'im Psula, okay, uh, that if the Mincha offering is Pasul, in other words, if something happened that rendered the Mincha offering uh, not you, that you couldn't, uh, you couldn't actually offer it up on the altar, right? That somehow it become nifsal, yifsalu. They also become pasul. The im kshayratsa certainly would apply to truma or kochim kalim. The im kshayra, but if they, if, if this mincha offering was kasher, meaning suitable, fit, right? Yochlu, they need to be consumed. This food has to be consumed just with the strict, all the strict rules regarding the consumption of the mincha that the priests have to, they have to eat it in the azara. It needs to be eaten in the courtyard of the temple. Uh, it, it means that a non-Kohen cannot eat of it, etc., etc. So that's putting teeth, so to speak, to the word yikdash shall become sanctified because sanct becoming sanctified is can be just sort of a vague term and this is no longer vague. Rashi's clarified that uh, for us taking the analysis of the Sifra and, and making it something that we can access. Onwards. 
Vaidaber Hashem El Moshe Lemur. So now we're on to a different subject, right? Hashem spoke to Moses with these words saying, Ze Korban Aharon Uvanav, this should be the offering of Aaron and his sons, Asher Yakrivu, which they should offer up, Lashem to Hashem, the Yom Himashachoto, on the day he, that he is appointed. In other words, the inauguration. And this is what it is. Asirit ha'efa, and asirit, a tenth of an efa. We discussed that. That's about 2.2 liters, solid of fine flour, mincha tamid, a perpetual meal offering, machatzita baboker, half of this in the morning, umachatzita ba'ariv, and half of it in the evening. So again, these verses cry out for interpretation. So this Zeh Korban, this is the offering of Aaron and his sons, Asher Yakrivu, which they should offer up uh, um, to Hashem, etc., etc. Okay, uh, let's go into the Rashi. Zeh Korban Aharon Uvanav. This is the offering of Aaron and his sons. Af Tot. So he's saying even the non-high priests, the priests, the, there's only one high priest. A, a kohen hediot means a ordinary priest, as opposed to the high priest. Makrivim, they also have to offer up asirit ha'efa, a tenth of the efa, the yom on the day shehem mitchanchim la'avoda, that they are inaugurated into the service. Aval kohen gadol. But with regard to the high priest, the Chol Yom, he has to offer it up every single day. The high priest is responsible for this Asirit Haifa Mincha. He has to bring it every single day, Shinemor, as it says, Mincha Tamid. It says a perpetual offering, Mincha Tamid. So that refers to the high priest, because otherwise there appears to be an internal inconsistency in this verse. And the way that you parse it out is to say that one, this mincha tamid part uh, has to do with the high priest. The part that says on the day they are appointed refers to his sons or to the other priests, the non-high priest. And he says, here we go, Shine'emar, it says mincha tamid, it uses the term a perpetual meal offering, etc. For hakohen ha-mashiach tachtav, and what it's telling you is that the Kohen who is anointed in his place, in the place of a high priest, in other words, a priest, when they take over the position of high priest of his descendants, Chukat uh, Olam, I believe, I think I didn't go too far. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right, it is in a perpetual statute. So it's telling you um, this, how the mincha operates regarding the high priest when the high priest uh, is, is, um, uh, is no longer, he, he retires and is replaced by another priest as the high priest. He also has to bring an offering, this mincha. And when they're inaugurated, starting with the inauguration every day, he needs to bring it, the high priest. And as for the regular priests, they just do it when they are installed. Some more details here. Okay. Al uh, machavat. So here we go. This is a little bit of a different mincha that we're being we're learning about here. It should be in a pan, a shallow pan, as opposed to a deeper pan, marcheshet, uh, where the uh, it basically fries in deep oil. But here it's a shallow pan, bashemen in with oil, te'ase it shall be made, mur bechet fully soaked, to Vienna you should bring it. In this particular case, tufine pastries, mincha pitim a meal offering of uh, well loaves I suppose one could say or wafers in this case I would say of wafers, takriv, you shall offer up, reach nichoach lashem, 
again, of pleasing fragrance to Hashem. And we already know that this phrase of pleasing fragrance means this is exactly what God wants you to do. And that when we act in this particular way uh, that God requires of us, it is as if it is a pleasing fragrance. Little Rashi on this, Morbechet, this word Morbechet, not a common word, meaning fully soaked. And again, look at this. It's all coming from the Sifra. So he says, Chaluta Barotchin. He means Chaluta means completely soaked in hot, in this case, hot oil, cold surcha, as much as it requires, right? To the fully, cold surcha would be fully, fully soaked in hot oil. Tufine, so this word, again, not common words. Afuya, afuyot harbe. He says it's baked a number of times. She'achar chalitata, that after it is saturated, ofer batanur, he then goes and bakes it in an oven, v'chozer, and after that, u'metagna b'machvat, he then fries it in the machvat, in the pan. So, uh, rebaked uh, rebaked bread here, rebaked baker, uh, uh, wafers. Minchat pitin, right? So a, a meal offering of wafers. Melamed, so he teaches. Shetuuna petita. So he, this is telling you that I believe petita here means uh, to break it uh, in uh, into pieces. Velo petita mamash. Okay. Betziin. Upirurim, and he says, and not, uh, it doesn't really mean petita, uh, bitsi'in, I believe would be pieces. Upurim, that would be like crumbs. The fish eina nikmetzet, but okay, so he says, the reason is that it's not, there's no fistful taken of it here. Ela kofla lishnaim. But what he does is he breaks it into two. He folds it over, literally, is what it means, into two. The the kofla la arba. And he then once again folds it over a second time into four. Sheti va erev, meaning literally it means warp and woof, meaning across and down. The enorm of deal, but he doesn't actually separate it. So I assume that this is, while I'm calling it a wafer, it must be a soft wafer and not a crisp wafer, is what he's saying. And in this particular manner, he offers it up as, you know, he burns it up. He offers it by fire. The Torah, and Rashi says explicitly, he says, this is explained in the uh, Torah Kohanim. And this, this up here, Barashi Yashan, he says in, in older manuscripts, we find this particular Rashi that we just discussed. Onwards to the next verse. V'hakohen ha-Mashiach tachtiv. Here we go. And the anointed priest uh, who takes over after him, right, who, who replaces him, mibanav, from his sons, of his sons, ya'ase ota, he should do this. Chok olam, it is an eternal statute. Lashem for Hashem, Kalil Toktar. It shall be completely offered up. So we learn here, I did mention this earlier on, that the mincha of a priest, okay, and we'll find out uh, any priest for that matter, is completely Kalil, that it's completely offered up, whereas we know other Israelites, uh, only a part of it is offered up on the altar. Rashi on this. Hamashiach tachtav mi banav, right? Who is anointed in in his stead of his sons? So he says, Hamashiach mi banav tachtav. He says he just puts it in. You look at this. 
right? Uh, who is anointed of his sons in his place. He's just saying that the, the wording makes more sense if you just change the order a little bit. Khalil Toktar, it shall be completely offered up by fire. He says, Ein Nik Metzet, it isn't, uh, you know, there isn't the fistful that's taken, Liyot Shireha Nechalim, so that its leftovers, its remaining parts can be consumed. Elakula Khalil, but this Mincha offering is completely offered up. Vechain Ko Minchat Kohen, Shel Nedava. Khalil Tiyer. And likewise, when it comes to any free will offering of a mincha by a priest, it needs to be completely, completely consumed. So here we go. Goes on to say this. Rashi's just quoting the next verse here. The Chol Minchat Kohen and any mincha of a priest, any meal offering of a priest. Rashi had added up the word nidava. In other words, that a priest become, brings. Uh, willingly or voluntarily, Khalil it shall be completely consumed, Lo Te'achel, it shall not be eaten, it shall not be eaten by the priests. So let me mark a place here, and for tomorrow, God willing, here we are. Let's do this, and I'm going to stop the share and bring the recording to an end. Bokertov everyone.